Hello, good evening, and I believe today has been a wonderful day. Uh, you're welcome to another episode of the series that we've been running for the, the past eight weeks. This is our eighth week on becoming a better man. My name is Tunde Disu, and I'm here on behalf of the Admirals, which is a special ministry for men. And we've been looking at this, this topic on how to become a better man for, for, this is the eighth week, like I said. And so far, it has been a, a wonderful, wonderful time in, in exchanging ideas, in rubbing minds, in looking at various areas where, whereby as men, we can become better, we can become excellent, we can grow, develop, and and increase in our stature and in our relevance and in, in the delivery of our assignments as men. So it has been a, a, a journey, like we said at the beginning of discovery. And I know for definite that I, my life has not been the same. I have been touched, I've been blessed, I've been encouraged, I've been stretched. I've been asked to do things that I'm maybe not comfortable doing or not wanted to do before. But because you just have to do this thing to become a better man, I have taken and accepted the challenge like most of you have. And I'm glad we're here again today to, to take another lap around the, the, the field in discovering another aspect of what is required from you and from me to become better men. And for the ladies that have been joining us, you are very welcome. And I'm sure the materials and the topics that we have been looking at, they have been uh, blessings to you as well. So it's not just men becoming better, it's also the ladies enjoying uh, the same benefits. Um, please, if you are there, let me know. Say something. Let me know you are there. Uh, I'd like to see who is going to be the first on the platform today so that we can, we can kickstart today's program. Uh, we've got so much to cover. I've been, I've been, I've been looking through these materials all day for the past few days, just trying to make sure everything is in place so that we can have a great time tonight. So, uh, if you are out there, please let me know. Uh, type something, say something, so that I can know you are there, and then we can we can start the program in earnest. Over the past few few weeks, we've looked at various topics uh, within this series. Dr. Lawson, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you. And happy birthday in Arias. I wish you all the best in your new year. Uh, over the past few weeks, we've been looking at various topics. We've looked at uh, how to overcome fear. We've looked at how to find your non-negotiable, unalterable terms. Uh, JB, thank you for joining us as well. We've looked at various topics. Uh, we've looked at how to serve. We've looked at the importance of working as a man. And in all of this, I, I am sure that somewhere, somehow, part of this has been a blessing to, to, to you. And I would like to hear your feedback. I would like to know as well how this is ministering to you, how this is touching you. And, uh, and like I said last week, we are planning to have uh, a special gathering for men at some point where we'll be able to take questions and answers, where we'll be able to pray one for another, where we'll be able to fellowship as men. And uh, by, by, by next week's program, I'll be announcing the date and the venue for, for that. So look out for that. Um, it's going to be a wonderful time. Monica Van Kooten, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's an honor to have you on board. Thank you so much. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have two ladies amongst us. Today, we're looking at another another topic and this one uh, i know you have seen the the sneak peek the sneak peek of it 
on the on the on the banner that was posted today's topic is become a better man be assertive become a better man be assertive let me let me let me try and paint a picture here just to give us a background of what it means to be assertive what assertiveness is all about uh, I don't want this to be just a head knowledge thing. I want this to be something that we can all relate to and understand from the beginning. The foundation is important. Let's assume every Friday, just as about just as about the time you were leaving the office, and your boss put his head around the door and said, "Oh, I'll need you to be in the office tomorrow. We have this report to to." To complete and send to the head office and he for the past three four weeks that has been the pattern he will wait till just about 5 30 just about the time you're about to leave the office on friday and then he will say oh uh, i need you to be in the office tomorrow and every time he says that you say you your response is yes sir even though you know that you already have a family program planned for that weekend and then you go home and you complain, you talk about it, you complain to your wife, your children, your friends, and everybody. But every time he asks you at 5.30 on Friday, you say, yes, sir. Okay, maybe that's not you. Let me try another one, another example. It's your date night with your wife and you've, you've taken her to your, your special restaurant. You've ordered the steak of the house. You've 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 been looking forward to this particular delicacy, and then the waiter brings your food, puts it in front of you. You took one look and you knew immediately this is not what I ordered. But instead of you to say to the waiter, oh, "Excuse me, sir, this is not what I ordered," you you nodded and you just continued. And then somewhere along the line, the waiter comes back and says, Sir, how, how is everything? And you say, Oh, yeah, 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 everything is fine. And then on your way home, you are complaining to your wife how terrible that was. Hi, Alex. Hi, Charles. You are complaining uh, you didn't eat your food because that wasn't what you ordered. But the waiter asks you, and you say, Oh, you no, know, it's fine, it's fine. All right, maybe that's not you again. Let's try one more. In January or in December, you made a decision, you made a resolution that if immediately January comes in, I am going to enroll myself in a gym so that I can work on myself, build my stamina, and lose some weight. But because you know your wife can, will not accept the fact that you're going to be out of the house, maybe one hour, maybe two hours on the Saturday that you're supposed to be together, you couldn't tell her, and therefore you didn't enroll in the gym. Now, if any of this scenario seems like, mm, I think you got my number, or if, this, if any of this seems like somebody you know, maybe it's not you, maybe it's your friend, it's your colleague in the office, it's your neighbor, whoever. If you notice any of these traits in a man, that man is what we called Mr. Nice Guy. He's Mr. Nice Guy. The, the, the Mr. Nice Guy has some symptoms. Now, maybe the three examples I gave, you, you can't relate to that. I'm going to give some examples, some symptoms of how you know who Mr. Nice Guy is. And maybe as we go down the list, you'll find yourself and I'll find myself. Hi, Tokes. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate your time. So what are some of the symptoms of a Mr. Nice Guy? Number one, Mr. Nice Guy take a passive approach to every relationship and to his life. He's very passive. He's so laid back, he's almost horizontal. Instead of standing up for himself, 
Mr. Nice Guy will let other people walk all over him. He is a perennial people pleaser. He would not want to ruffle the feather. He would rather allow people to have their way rather than for him to take his position. A Mr. Nice Guy has he has trouble saying no to people, even to his own detriment. He cannot say no. Maybe that's not you. When Mr. Nice Guy needs something or wants something, he would rather go without than to ask, even when that thing or that item is within his right, he would rather go without than to face somebody to ask for what is duly his. Mr. Nice, Mr. Nice Guy would rather go along than, go, than get ahead. He would rather follow the crowd and just play the game and just do what everybody is doing rather than follow his heart and do what he knows to do. On the surface, Mr. Nice Guy is very quiet, he's very gentle, he's soft-spoken, he's very polite. But that's on the surface. If you dig slightly deeper, you will find out Mr. Nice Guy, maybe it's not that nice. Because deep on the inside, there is a cry that is going on on the inside of him, wanting to be who he really is. But because he's so passive, he won't do anything about it. I don't know about you, but these are symptoms that are very, very prevailing amongst men. It is so common among so many men. The, the issue with that is this. Mr. Nice Guy is just a volcano waiting to erupt. He's a volcano waiting to erupt. And usually when such people, when, they, when the cock pops, what comes out is, is usually very, very dangerous. Because all along he has been bottling and just suppressing that resentment, that anger, that, that cry, that dissatisfaction that's going on on the inside of him. And then one day something will happen and pop the cock will come off, and then the whole lava will erupt from the volcano. And then people, people will be like, that's out of character. Yes, it is, because all along he has never been himself. So the question is, if these symptoms, these examples that I've just given, are what Mr. Nice Guy is, and now we know the effect of him being Mr. Nice Guy, the fact that he can erupt at any time. What can he do? What can a nice guy, what can he do to regain a control, to regain the control for his life so that he can live his own life, he can live a normal life? What tends to happen is this. Mr. Nice Guy will swing from one extreme to the other. He will go from being passive to complete aggression. Mr. Nice Guy will suddenly become the, the bully of the office. He will turn completely the opposite of who he was. But you see, that is not the best approach. That is not the best approach. When they turn to, the, to become the aggressive person, they, they now want to control everything. They want to control everybody. They want to be in charge of everything. They must have the last word. They must, it must be their way or no other way. A complete opposite of who they were. But you see, being aggressive is not good. Because when you are aggressive, you are teaching other people around you to also adopt an aggressive response to you. Because life is lived on sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow is what you're going to reap back. So if Mr. Nice Guy suddenly becomes the nasty man in the house, 
guess what? He's going to get that back. He's going to get the aggressiveness back. So the question then is, if it's not good for him to be passive, and it's not good for him to be aggressive, then what does where where does where where, where is the middle ground? Thank you, uh, Kunle Ajala, for joining us. Adeto Oluwa Kevin, thank you for joining us, sir. Ma'am. Instead of passivity and aggressiveness, the best approach lies somewhere between the two. Instead of being passive or being aggressive, there is a, a halfway house that is the best approach. It is called the sweet spot for communication and behavior. The sweet spot for communication and behavior. And that spot is called assertiveness. Assertiveness. Being assertive. Being assertive. Being firm without being rude. Being firm without being passive. Assertiveness, therefore, is the middle ground, is the halfway house between being a passive Mr. Nice Guy or being the aggressive Mr. Bully Man. But what's the what is the origin? What what is where can we how can we trace back this issue of assertiveness? Assertiveness can be traced back to the modern corporate world which is dominated by men and then the women that are in between that are working in these offices a time came when it was recognized that they were being bullied either openly or discreetly and so organizations started putting together courses and training trainings for the women to go for assertive training. What does that mean? They were to go and be trained so that they can be more confident in the traditional masculine corporate world. But what, what, what happened was while the women were being trained to be more assertive, to be more confident, to be more upgoing and, and stand up for themselves and their rights, the men were being trained to tone it down. The men were being trained to be more sensitive, to be more collaborative to the women in their midst. Now, there is nothing wrong with that. The only issue there is it led to a situation where some men lost the balance between being passive, being aggressive, being assertive. They be, some men became confused about where the lines are. And gradually, the, 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 the manly ego, the, the confidence of these men were, were being eroded by this training to the point where they don't even know whether they are now to be soft or to be strong. So it has now come all the way around where men are now being trained to learn or relearn how to be assertive again. So that's the origin of all of this, especially in the corporate world. So what does it mean to be assertive? What does it mean to be assertive? And before I go into that, I just want to encourage you if you're if you have not shared this, this program tonight, please go ahead and press the share button and let us be a blessing to others that might not uh, at this time be with us on this program. Let's go and share the, the message. Press the share button at the bottom of your screen and you'll have a footprint of this on your timeline and your friends of friends and contacts also can, can benefit from the program. And I thank you for doing that. Thank you. So what does it mean to be assertive? What does it mean to be assertive? Brother Wilson, thank you for joining us. Assertiveness is actually a skill. It's an interpersonal skill that can be learned, like we've just highlighted. It's an interpersonal skill in which you demonstrate healthy 
confident, healthy confidence, and you are able to stand up for yourself and for your right, but at the same time respecting the rights of other people. Assertiveness is an interpersonal skill that can be learned, and it is demonstrated by having a healthy confidence that you are able to stand up for yourself and for your right, while at the same time respecting and honoring the rights of other people around you. So how would you know if somebody is assertive? What are the signs of somebody who is assertive? If you are assertive, you will be direct and honest in what you say, in how you say it, in your body language. You will look people straight in the eye. You will talk to them with respect and you will hold yourself in your position without being trampled upon. If, if you are assertive, another way of knowing is if something is bothering you, if you need something, you are not afraid to say it, you are not afraid to ask, you are not afraid to talk about it, then it's another sign of somebody who is assertive. So if you need something and if you, you want something, you ask for it and ask politely. That is an assertive, some, some, uh, assertive person rather than like we said about the passive guy, the Mr. Nice guy who wants something, who needs something but won't say anything about it thinking that the people around him are mind readers. Sorry, people are not mind readers. There are not many mystic meds around. So if you want something, you need something. As an assertive person, you have to say it and say it politely and say it confidently and still respect the views of other people. Thank you, Hadejabi, for joining us. An assertive person also understands that why it is okay for him or her to make that request, to ask for what he or she wants. The people you are asking from also have the right to say yea or nay, and that should not make you angry. You have to respect their views, their opinions, their thoughts, and their person that you will not become angry just because they, they have given you a negative response to your, to your queries or your, or your requests. Then you are assertive. An assertive person knows that you might not get what you want or what you ask for, but you also know that there's nothing wrong in asking anyway. I think that is one of the big things about people who are passive. They feel by asking, they burden, they putting a burden on the person they're asking, they causing you trouble, they inconveniencing the person. When in actual fact, it is not. So an assertive person is 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 confident enough to know that he can ask, and there is nothing wrong in asking. That is an assertive person. That is an assertive person. Now the question is, are you a passive person, an aggressive person, or an assertive person? And I think we all need to look deep into ourselves tonight and ask that question and maybe answer it. Well, not maybe. We need to answer it. Am I a passive person or am I an aggressive person or am I an assertive person or am I somewhere in between because until you're able to answer that you the people around you your relationships will suffer you will live a, 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 a miserable life because you are not fully who you're supposed to be so how do you become assertive Let's assume this person is being passive, he's been laid back, he's been allowing people to walk all over him, people take him for granted, take, him for, take advantage of him. And now you are listening to this program. Now you are saying, okay, uh, now I understand what this is all about. So what do I do, Tunde? Now you've said, you've, you've got my number, you've got my postcode. Now what do I do? What can I do? 
to change this situation? I'm glad you asked a question because these are some of the things we'll be looking at tonight. Sister Kate said, interestingly, assertiveness is one of the things we touched on in our lectures this week. See, this is, this is uh, it's something that is very fresh. It's on the table because a lot of people are going through this. Hey, Anessi, thank you for joining from Abuja. Wow, thank you, Anessi. Thank you. So the question is, how do you become more assertive? How do you become more assertive? The one and only, the best way to become or to learn, to start to learn to be assertive, is you have to create an assertive mindset. You have to develop an assertive mindset. You have to determine in yourself that you are going to change the status quo by becoming assertive. You need to get rid of all and every limiting factors, everything that is telling you you cannot be, you shouldn't be, you, have, you don't need to say, you cannot say. You have to, to flush them out and then start to develop a mindset that, that, that defines you as an assertive person. And we're going to look at some of the ways to develop this mindset tonight. The first point on how to develop a mindset. Hi, Joby, how are you? Thank you for joining us. The first way to develop this mindset is for you to set boundaries. You need to set boundaries for yourself. What is a boundary? A boundary is, is, is an enclosure. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a landmark. It's a fence. It's a perimeter. It's, it, it is an enclosure that, that says to all and sundry, this is where I am. This is my portion. This is my place. This is my patch. This ground, this land belongs to me. This is my space. That is what a boundary is. So what kind of a boundary, what type of boundary do you have to set for you to be assertive? You have to set boundaries, which are rules and limits that a man creates for himself to guide and direct other people around him on what is permissible as a behavior when he's around. A boundary, the boundaries are rules and, 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 and limits that you have put in place around you so that people who relate to you, your friends, your family, your colleagues, your, your neighbor, they know that as far as, you, as far as you are concerned, certain things of this nature are not permissible around you. I'll give you an example. If you say you're a born-again Christian and people around you are free to be vulgar, to swear, to, 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 to talk rudely and be, be just nasty, and they, are, they don't feel the, the need for them to caution themselves, they don't see any reason why your presence should demand anything better from them, then you are not assertive. You have not created that boundary. You have not set the parameters that, that dictates to all and sundry that when I'm around, when you are around me, mind your language. Mind your language. Your boundaries, like we did during our first program, your boundaries are your not. Your non-negotiable, unalterable terms your non-negotiable and unalterable terms. Your boundaries are your not. They are the things that you are committed to in your life, things that determine or describe who you are, especially when it comes to things that are close to your heart, like, like your, your children, your spouse, your faith, your work with God, your principles in life. When you make it absolutely, abundantly clear to all and sundry, then people will know that when you when you are around this person you don't do that this type of a thing he doesn't like it he won't stand for it now you are creating an assertive mindset 
and you are passing that message out to others so that they can respect it as well. Thank you, Uncle Joe from Nigeria, for joining us. Thank you, Moses. You are very welcome. In case you, you haven't, you were not part of the first program when we talked about the non-negotiable or non tribal terms, I would strongly, strongly advise that you go on my YouTube channel and watch that video. It, it, it will help you in this exercise of creating a mindset of assertiveness. The second way of developing this mindset of, of assertiveness is that you must take responsibility for your own problems. Take responsibilities for your own problems. You see, a passive person, Mr. Nice Guy will wait around for somebody to, to clear his to clean his mess for him. But if you are assertive, you know this is my issue, this is my story to tell, this is my problem to solve. And you you take the ne necessary step steps to solve that problem. That is part of being assertive. That is part of developing that mindset of, of assertiveness. Thank you, Ndidi, for joining us. An assertive man understand that, understands that his problems are his responsibilities. If he sees something that needs changing in his life, he goes ahead and he changes it. If an assertive man is not happy with something around and about him, he won't just sit down and wait that, okay, maybe somebody will come and look after it and take No, he will get up and get on with it and get it sorted. So the second way of developing an assertive mindset is that you must take responsibility for your own problems. Number three, don't expect people to read your mind. I've said that before. Don't expect people to read your mind. If you are not saying it, it's not getting done. If you are not asking for it, you are not getting it. The Bible says, from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffer, suffers violence, and only the violent people will take it, and they won't just take it because it's given to them. They will take it by force. So in order for you to develop an assertive mindset, you don't expect people to read your mind because they, they can't. There are no many psychic people on the street. So if you need something, if you want something, if something is bothering you, you have to say it. You have to say it. Never assume that, you, that people know your every need. No, they don't. Step number four in developing this mindset of assertiveness. And please, if you have not shared this message, this program tonight, as you can see, it, it is something very, very deep and very, very much on the plate. Uh, Sister Kate was saying earlier on that this week uh, in, her, in her lectures, they were talking about assertiveness. So this is going to help a lot of people. So please, if you have not shared this, kindly go ahead and share it so that others can benefit from it. Dickinson, thank you for joining us. Number four, the fourth way of developing this mindset of assertiveness is that you need to understand you are not in charge of how other people feel or behave. That is, I mean, that is, that is big. You are not in charge. You are not responsible for other people's behaviors and their feelings. It is not. It's not for you. It's not your 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 load to carry. Both passive and aggressive men share a similar problem. Listen to this. Both passive and aggressive people they share a similar problem. What's that problem? They both think they are in charge of how other people feel or behave. The only difference is they go about it different ways. They go about it in different ways. And I'll, I'll explain that. An aggressive man assumes responsibility of other people's behavior and emotions by exerting his will on them through physical, mental, and emotional force. An aggressive man. 
will be in your face. Want to, you have to do what he says. You have to do it the way he said it. It's only his way or no way. That is an aggressive man saying, I, I know what is good for you. Just do as, I, as I'm telling you. A passive man, on the other hand, will assume responsibility for other people's behavior by constantly submitting his will to the will of others. He will rather allow others to walk all over him and have their way and, and just do whatever they like as long as they are happy, they are peace, they are in peace, then he, he is so happy to take the, 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 the dirt that they are leaving on him. No, no, no. It is not your responsibility. It is not for you to, to you are not responsible for other people's feelings and behavior. Passive men feel it is their job to make sure every other person is happy, even if they are living a miserable life. Sir Nancy, thank you for joining us. Sultan, thank you for joining us. Even if a passive man is living a miserable, crying himself to sleep, he still feels he has to do that so that other people can be happy. An assertive man, however, recognizes that it is not his job. He is not even in control about how people feel or how they think or how they behave. Everybody is responsible for their own decision, which is the root to how you feel and how you behave. So, are you assertive? Are you passive? Or are you aggressive? Because as you can see tonight, the three are on the table. And like the Bible says, life and death are before you. Choose one. And in case you don't know what to choose, let me make a recommendation. Choose life. Tonight, I'm saying the same thing. There's the aggressive side, there's the passive side, and there's the assertive side. Choose one. But just in case you are not sure of what to choose, let me make a good recommendation. Be assertive. Be assertive. Be assertive. So that's number four. Number four way of developing that mindset of assertiveness is you need to understand that you are not in charge of how other people feel or how they behave. That is their own issue to deal with. The fifth way of developing this mindset is for you to recognize that you are responsible for the consequence of your assertiveness. You are responsible for the consequences of your assertiveness. What do I mean by that? If you used to be passive and now you are developing this assertive mindset and you start to exhibit assertiveness, guess what? There will be people around you that will feel, what's wrong with him? He's changed because now you are relating to them not from the old you but from the new you. And some people can't handle that. So expect people for feathers to be ruffled. Expect people to grumble and complain. So those, those are some of the consequences of your assertiveness. But hey, guess what? For as long as you are better for yourself, you are getting better with yourself, they will adjust. They will have to make adjustment. But the truth is this. Dealing with those consequences as far as you are concerned, dealing with the consequences of people not happy now that you are changing, dealing with the consequences of people feeling that you are now exerting yourself, dealing with the consequences of people thinking, oh, now he thinks it's all of that, that is even far better than for you to continue to live a miserable life. So please enjoy your newfound life of assertiveness. The rest of the world will catch up. And they will, you, they will thank you for giving them that opportunity. Thank you, Wellington. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Wesley, all of you for joining us. And please, as you are coming, go ahead and share this uh, message tonight. Wesley Benjamin says, 
Accept feathers to be ruffled on your way to a better assertive you. That is absolutely correct, sir. Thank you. So we have looked at what is passive in pass, what is passive. What is it to be passive? What is it to be aggressive? We found the middle ground which is being assertive. We looked at the symptoms of each and each of these three samples. We've now looked at how can you graduate from being passive to become assertive. We've looked at four or five steps of how to develop a mindset of assertiveness. But before I go, let me just remind you, changing from being passive to become assertive is going to take time. It's not going to happen at a, at a, at, with a twinkle of an eye. You have to deliberately, constantly work on it and keep at it and keep working on it. And then gradually, you will become what you are working on. So what are some of the benefits of assertiveness? What are some of the benefits that will accrue to you by being assertive? So Joe Abidemi, dreams are for others. Just share your video. Let them know that you will appreciate it. Amen. Let them be dreaming. Thank you, sir. The benefits of assertiveness, number one, your relationship will improve. Your relationships, they will improve when you become assertive. What, do I mean? what, what does that mean? Assertiveness is one of the key attributes that partners in any form of relationships, especially in a marriage relationship. Assertiveness is one of the key attributes that the, part, the, the two partners, they need in order for them to have a strong and healthy relationship. They both have to be assertive. Because if one person constantly feels that his or her need is not being met, or, 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 and it could be that he or she is not even expressing what that need is. You remember we said people are not psychic, they are not mind readers. If you don't say what you want, if you don't open your mouth, people won't know what you want. So in relationships, what tends to happen is people will not say. They will expect their partner to, to, to read their minds and know what they want and how they want or what they want to say and all of that. But what it will do is for the partner that is not saying, that is not expressing his or her mind, they start to build resentment towards the other person. They, they will say things like this person is taking advantage of them. They will say, this person is not caring, he's not loving, he doesn't feel my pain. Yes, he or she might not feel your pain because you haven't expressed it. Until you start to express your pain, people will not know. My sis, Sister Kashi, thank you for joining from the U.S. Sunday Otelaja, thank you. Thank you. Guys, if you haven't shared this message tonight please go ahead and do so let's be a blessing to others when you are assertive you will feel less stress you will feel less stress why because you you'll be able to say no to requests that will put stress on you when it, when when request comes that will put stress on you because you are assertive you say well, uh, gracia no, not today. I, I, no, I can't handle that today. You'll be able to say no to requests that in, in the past, maybe because you were, you were passive, you would have accepted. But now that you're assertive, you'll be able to say, no, I don't want that. Also, when you are assertive, you feel more in control of your life. You feel more in control of your life. You are not now. You are not living at the at the at the beck and call of others. You are not waiting for people to tell you what to do, how to do, where to do, when to do. And uh, your life is back in your hand. You have the rein to to ride and and live your life the way you choose, not at the command of others. And all of that will take away stress from you. Because, ladies and gentlemen, one of the root causes of stress 
is unfulfilled life. When people feel they are not fulfilling their lives, when they feel they should be better than this, when people feel I should be above this, this shouldn't be happening to me, that is the cause of stress. And if you are passive, you will constantly feel, why is everybody doing this to me? Why is everybody doing this to me? Why can't they see what I want? Why can't they see? But actually, they cannot see it because you haven't expressed it. They cannot see it because you haven't, remember, form a boundary. They cannot see it because you haven't told them about your not, your non-negotiable or not terrible terms. And until you start doing that, you will live a life of stress. Number four, benefit of being assertive. You will become less resentful. You will become less resentful. Your relationship will become more enjoyable because now you have the freedom to express yourself, to make demand, to ask questions, to do what you want. You're not like... Uh, uh, Say you go out with your family, your, your spouse and the children, and maybe you on a Saturday afternoon you, you've been out shopping, and then uh, your wife says, oh, honey, maybe we should just get something to eat so that we don't have to go home and cook. What would you like? Now, a passive man will say, whatever, whatever you decide. And the children say, no, dad, but say, anything, I don't mind. Now, maybe you don't mind. But at least have an opinion. But more than that, express that opinion. This is your family for crying out loud. They're not going to suddenly become turned against you. They want to know what you think, how you feel about everything. And that's why they will ask you. And as a man, and rightly so, they are expecting you to give them leadership, to give them direction, to, to show them the way. But if all you do is shrug your shoulder and say, oh, whatever, and then your wife says, okay, we're going to have uh, Chinese. Meanwhile, for the past three, four nights, you've been having Chinese. And then you go in there, you have you had the Chinese, and then you come home and you grumbling and say, oh, another Chinese night. But she did ask you, what would you like? You see how resentful your life will be if you are passive. But if you are assertive, when she says, oh, honey, what would you like? Do you know what? I've had Chinese for the past three nights. Maybe we should just go for a uh, uh, steak or, or, or something light or, or anything else. Maybe we should just get pizza or something. Or I'll, let's go home. I'll do the cooking tonight. Rather than just say, oh, whatever. And then complain about the whatever result. When you are assertive, you do things because you actually want to do them. And that takes away that edge of resentfulness that will build over time. Thank you, Monica, for joining us. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Whew. Wow. Quickly. Now we've seen some of the benefits of assertiveness. How can we put it into action? Let us see quickly see how to put assertiveness into action. Number one, start small. Start small. Take baby steps. Don't, don't, don't wake up and want to take on the, 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 the giant, all of us. No, no, no. Take baby steps. For example, maybe it's your lunch time and you, you go to the fast food joint and you say, oh, can I have a... I don't know, cheeseburger. And then the, 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 the other, the, the, you were served and you look at it and it's, uh, it's chicken burger. And assertiveness in you should be able to say, excuse me, sorry, this is not what I ordered. I wanted cheeseburger. Rather than you just uh, take it, then you, it means you re reverse back to your passive, to your passive self. No, just say, excuse me, Politely, do say it politely. Excuse me, sir. Sorry, I wanted cheeseburger, but this is chicken. Sorry, do you mind changing it? And nine times out of ten, they'll say, oh, we're sorry, sir. 
and they will take it and change it. So start small. Start with that first step. Don't start with going to your boss and, and shout at him and, and, and cause yourself more trouble than it's worth. Start small. When you feel comfortable in those small, small baby steps, now you can move on to the big one. Allah B.C. Nancy said, when you are assertive, you do things just because you want to do them. That's true. That is very true. The second way of practicing assertiveness is learn to say no. In the school of assertiveness, one of the biggest weapons you have is that two-letter word, no. No. No, no is your best friend. Because the reason you are having issues is all along you haven't learned the word no. You haven't mastered the use of the word no. You let everybody put their issues on you. This person can't finish this project, they give it to you. This person can't pick up their child from school, they ask you to go and do it. This person can't uh, get their car to start or the tire is flat, they ask you to do it. And you spend your life running and running around and around everybody, making everybody happy. And then you get home and you are, you are tired. No. Learn the vocabulary of no. Not now. No. Not now. It's possible to be firm and still be polite in your no. It doesn't have to be, no, 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 you don't need to be aggressive. Just be assertive and say no. Now, at first, because remember, you are graduating from being passive to become becoming assertive. At first, saying no will be a little bit uncomfortable because you are not used to it. But don't worry, keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it and gradually you will, you will master it. And when you say no, don't feel guilty. No, don't feel guilty of saying no to people for treating yourself like you are their equal. Don't, there's nothing to feel guilty about. Number three, be simple and direct. When you are assertive, less is more. You don't need to try and explain yourself why you can't, why you should. No. In most cases, you don't even owe these people any explanation. It's your life. It's your time. It's your space that they're trying to encroach into. So you should be able to say, do you know what? No, not today. No, 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 no. Uh, maybe at work on Friday, the, the, the gentleman said, oh, it's Friday night. Let's, let's, go and, let's go to the pub. No, you should be able to say, guys. Have fun. I'm going home. I, I have an appointment with, my, with my, my wife. So learn to say no. Be simple. There's no need to elaborate or, or start giving an explanation. Just politely say your piece and leave it said. Number four, use I statement. Use I statement. When making a request or expressing disapproval, use I statement. Instead of saying things like, you are so inconsiderate. Say something like, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted today. Is it alright if I look at that tomorrow? And when you are when you are when you are in the process of graduating from passive passiveness to assertiveness, remember it's gonna take time, it's gonna take process, and you're gonna have to train the people around you. So be careful that your response doesn't become like uh, uh, an accusation or you are you are you are judging the people before they even say something and you are jumping to conclusion that's the word no just use the let i let it be a personal thing that it is about you when you say whatever you say kenny thank you for joining us Kenny says, saying no is always a big challenge, but it takes a lot of load off one's shoulder. That's very true. Hey, Zingi, thank you for joining us. It's good to have you. 
Number five, don't apologize or feel guilty for expressing a need, a want, or your right. Don't apologize for it. It is your right. It is your need. It is what you want. There is no need for you to apologize for it. Number six, use confident body language and tone. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Just your body posture says to the person, this is not going to fly today. And guess what? They will take their trade somewhere else. Look confident when making a request or stating a preference. Look confident. Don't look timid and, and all beaten up. Stand up straight. Lean in. Smile. Make eye contact and let the person know that you are just as equal as they are and therefore you are making the request because you don't feel any less than the other person. And like I said, you don't have to justify or explain why you are making that decision. It's your life. It's your decision. You should be able to make that. And number eight, be persistent. Be persistent. Sometimes you have to, to say it again and again before, the, before people will get a hold of it. And finally, number nine, pick your battles. When you are graduating from passiveness to assertiveness, pick your battle. Don't try and jump on everybody's throat just because you want them to know that I'm no longer passive, I'm now assertive. No, no, no. Pick your battle so that you can win every battle that you get into. Pick your battles. In conclusion, learning to voice your opinions and more importantly, respecting the validity of those opinions and your wants will serve to make you a more confident man. By you expressing your opinion and having confidence in, the, in your right to express that opinion, we gradually build a confident man of you. Start small. Learn how to state your wishes and make assertiveness a part of who you are as a man. If you have not shared this program tonight, please, let's all do that now just before we finish. Let's go and share this, 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 this program tonight. Let's share it. So what's the task for, for this week? What is the task for this week? Before I go into the task, I just have one or two announcements quickly to make. Number one, next week on this program, we will announce, or I will announce, the venue and the date for our Become a Better Man seminar. The venue and the date for our Become a Better Man seminar will be announced on this program next week. So look out for that. What does that mean? It means from now on you need to start preparing the questions that you want to ask and start emailing them and texting them to me so that we can start piling them up. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're going to have loads of questions. So the earlier you, you send your questions in, the better. And also come on that day with your prayer requests. If there's a prayer point you want us to agree together as men, Come on that day, we will paste them on the wall, we'll stretch our hands to it, we'll lay hands on them, we'll hold hands, and we'll pray one for another. I am so looking forward to that. It, it's going to be great. It's going to be a great, great fun amongst all of us that day. So please, email your, your, your questions. Send in or send a text with your, send your questions by text or by email so that we can start pulling them all together. Like I said last week, there will be enough wisdom in that room that day, in that hall that day, to answer all those questions so that all of us can go home better than we were when we came. It, there's something about when men come together and just, and just hold each other and stand shoulder to shoulder and, and really go for it. And I'm... I'm you can say I'm excited. I am ready for it. I'm really looking forward to it. So next week, we will announce the date and the venue. And please start sending in your questions now. And on the day, come prepare with your prayer points so that we can all agree together 
on it. For the sake of repetition, the telephone number is 771 265 3428. 771 265 3428. And the email address again is the admirals, the admirals at yahoo.com. The admirals at yahoo.com. Remember, this program is under the platform of the admirals, which is the special ministry for men. And we're, we are so honored that our, so our ladies are joining us to partake of this, the, the food on this table. You, we are so honored to have you ladies. Thank you for being part of us. And I believe that these materials, these topics, this program is also helping and benefiting you as well. It's not just for men. So what is the task? For this week what is the task for this week it's simple the task for this week is as men let's go out there and be assertive let's go out there and be assertive let's go out there and be assertive if you have not bought a copy of my book Elisha project the privilege of serving leaders Please go and grab a copy today on Amazon, either in Kindle format or in paperback format. Or if you inbox me, if you send me an email to that email address, theadmirals at yahoo.com, I have printed copies here which I can post out to you uh, for the same price as it is on Amazon uh, For if you order it from this program. There will be no extra cost to you. It will be the same price as it is on Amazon. So get it from Amazon or send an email in or send me a text with your address and we will facilitate that you get a copy of it. The reason I'm talking about this book every week is because it's not because I'm the author. It's because I know the value, the quality of the materials that are contained in this book. And a lot of work has gone into making sure it is done well, it is done properly. So it will be a blessing to you. Gentlemen, Mother's Day is coming. Why not get a copy for your wife? Not just this one, but as part of what you're going to give her. She will like you for it. She will thank you for it. You will be blessed because of it. Because she will learn how to serve. That's what this, is, this book is all about. Elisha Project. The privilege of serving leaders. Fred Nosaojo, thank you for joining us. Ola Nike Oyekachi, thank you. Wow, Nike, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Well, our time is up. Thank you once again, all of you, for being part of this journey. I am learning new things every week. I'm discovering new, new things every week. I am becoming better every week and i believe it's the same thing for you so please go ahead and share this this program tell your friends about it so that they too can log in and be part of it next week thursday and until then this is tunde diso once again saying we're not stopping until we all become better men and women thank you appreciate you thank you god bless you have a blessed week bye bye